You're lying. Toaster, you're on thin ice. Hey, 
thanks for joining. I know that was a little weird, but I really am telling the truth. Like I told you a few days ago, I really did read something else prior to Blooming Panic. It was just, well, as you can see, it was something a little weirder than Blooming Panic. <laughs> okay, maybe a lot weirder. You want to know the most fucked part of it? You know how in Bloomick, Lola's going through that weird plant transformation? In Blunini, she's molding. <laughs> Pretty gross, huh? Huh? Why is that? Oh, uh, huh, that is pretty dark, now that I think about it. I suppose how you'd expect. She vanished. Whoa, uh, that's some aggression. It's just a story. Sorry, you're right. I know how much it means to you. But isn't it okay for some stories to be a little sad sometimes? Oh, gotcha. Very fair. I like sad endings, but it does feel nice to see characters you love lead happy lives from time to time. Anyway, I managed to find those short stories again. It looks like they were all written prior to the first chapter of Bloomick. That's my guess. It had some similar plot points though, which was odd, like Nathaniel snapping at Lola. Yeah. Maybe they wanted to see which story style fit the characters better. Apparently a difficult choice for the author. I'm gonna keep digging though. If I'm lucky, the author dropped some sort of hint or accidental clue as to who they are. Or maybe there's another alternate version of the story out there that will have even more clues. Uh, to be completely honest, not really. <laughs> really digging into my raid hours. But this is important to you, right? Uh, yeah, I am. Is that... does that make you uncomfortable? I don't mean anything by it. Sweet? It's nothing. I just know what it feels like to be losing something you care about, you know? No problem. I'll do my best to find out who the author is. I promise. About what? <laughs> Actually, until recently, Onion Thief was a fan too. Sure was, but I mean, you saw. Onion Thief can't stand humans with flaws. I'm sure that's what he meant, though. <sighs> I've always liked Nathaniel. 
even in blooming panini when he was just a bowl of delicious risotto. Huh? That angry elf? No, he doesn't. Nathaniel is very calm and polite. You just have his recent outburst on your mind. Tsk tsk. But for the record, I like that angry elf as well. One of my favorite encounters. Well, maybe you'll get to see more of him. I think he shows up in a few other branches. But anyway, just like Nathaniel, I like how believable he is. He's the most realistic character, personality-wise. Well, uh, I'd like to think I wouldn't yell at my partner like that. But I can empathize with the feeling of cracking. No, I'm not dating anyone. Don't worry. Uh, uh I... Um, that just slipped out. I don't know why I said that. Ignore that. Oh. Uh, I'd like to believe I'd treat them pretty well, I guess. I've always been a sort of giver in past relationships. I like giving gifts and pampering the other person. Love language? Yeah, sure, probably. What about you? Yeah, in previous relationships. Uh, I guess I know you've dated at least one asshole before. Was he the only one? Ugh, I'm sorry. You deserve happier experiences. So, yeah, what about your love language? Oh, interesting. You're very honest. Mm, I guess I did. <laughs> I feel like I learned some fun things about you today. You're pretty interesting. Of course. The girl who refuses to leave a backbreaking job and tries to extract bits of happiness from an online story? I think she's pretty intriguing. <laughs> That's getting late. You have a long day tomorrow, right? M me too, <laughs> you know? But tomorrow, you would be upset if you stayed up any later. Talk to you later. Good night.
good heavens. You really think so? It's scary to lose that which you care deeply about, and it's all right to often mourn that loss. But remember, there's still beautiful things to explore ahead of you, and the memories will stay with you forever. That, uh, that silo conversation got a little bit heavy. You doing all right? <laughs> okay, good. I thought so too, but I wanted to be sure. Sallow's always been a future is brighter than you think sort of person. He's nice to have around the server. Makes me think sometimes that I'm overthinking my problems. I'm sure he wouldn't be as torn as I am. Ah, you remembered? Yeah, the buyout. I still don't want to sell, but maybe I'd be more willing to let go if I had a sort of 
guarantee that I would be able to move past it. <laughs> it would. I wish I was able to fully embrace that mindset of letting things go when it's time. Yeah. Speaking of, I did do some more digging around Bloomick. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about it, to be honest. Barely slept much last night. But don't worry, I'll make up for the lost sleep tonight and refuse to get out of bed until 2pm at the earliest. <laughs> now that's an idea. But yeah, I looked around for more details on Bloomick, but it just got weirder and weirder the more I looked. I think I found a really old, really early draft on a fiction site, but instead of a set of stories or one long web novel, it was a short story about Lola's transformation. No love interests, no college, just Lola sitting in a room contemplating her end. Right? makes me wonder why it branched out into the weird, convoluted story it is today, given that the original premise has stayed the same all this time. Here, a quote. I closed my eyes, wishing I could go back to the me I once was, but I knew better than to dream of impossibilities. The story never goes into what the change was this time, just focuses on Lola's thoughts. Yeah, but the better thing, there was an author signature, Bloom. Yeah, I'm gonna poke around a little and see what I can find with that. Might dig around the server too and see if there's any clues I missed. Eh, she can't look as thoroughly as I can. Can you imagine if I find another alternate universe, though? I wonder what else this Bloom person could write Lola into. I'm not sure how much weirder it could get from Italian food. Rooming? <laughs> what would Lola be? A Prius? <laughs> How the hell do you come up with something like that? Incredible. <laughs> You're sweet. Cute? You think I'm cute? Oh, oh, what the hell? I, I no, wait, that's uh, that's not. You did misread. I'm I'm very uh fine. I'm good. Great, even. Y uh, yeah. Shit. Why do you always make me feel like a teenager when I talk to you? My heart feels like it's pounding out of my chest. Uh, this is usually where we say goodnight. But I don't really want to say it yet. What about you? Really? Uh, <laughs> that makes me really, really happy. 
since you're staying up, I just want to say it. I'm interested in you. In, uh, you know, that way. Is it safe to assume you feel the same way? Shit. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate with that, huh? Obvious. Maybe it was to other people, but I'm a little slow to notice these kinds of things. I, I would have said something sooner if I'd noticed. That's a little embarrassing to admit. It was after that call we had where I tried to sign you up to play 14. The way you talked about Bloomick and your honesty about your job, it kind of stuck with me. I felt like we understood each other's struggles with letting go of things that mattered to us. And then the next day, when you empathized with my buyout problem, it sealed the deal. And, uh, uh you're really, really pretty. Your last boyfriend was an absolute idiot. Oh, finally, I'm not the one embarrassed. <laughs> yes! Now you're even cuter. I like this side of you. <laughs> uh, can I ask you what you first liked about me? Um really curious. Especially since I'm shocked you like me at all. Uh, maybe pleasantly surprised is a better way to put it. P pretty? <laughs> uh, my hair? You braiding my hair. That sounds nice. <laughs> if it's you touching me, I'm sure I'd like it regardless. Hmm? Oh. Oh. Uh. That was. I. Uh. I didn't mean that, or, well, no, I did, uh, but I didn't intend, uh... Stop! You're doing this on purpose. Whatever, whatever. I'd love to keep you up later, but I'd feel too guilty. <laughs> it's okay. There's always tomorrow. Sleep well. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. God, I have to hang up before I say something somehow even cringier. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow.
Oh, wow, everyone is here.
Listen to me very carefully. Everything will be okay, trust me. Now listen! The Final Fantasy website. Go there, download. Make sure you get into Spent Bet. Fuck! Spent Bet. Hello, readers. It seems you've been a little nosy lately. Bloombot, please. Whatever you're planning, don't shut it down. Don't shut the server down. Enough. No, wait! Hello. I've been hearing that you are looking for me. Oh, have you still not realized what is happening? My apologies. Why don't you sleep on it? I'd love to discuss this with you, since you seem fine enough. But you seem a bit... shaken at the moment, so the conversation can be put off. I'll be waiting here for you tomorrow after your workday concludes. Until then, I'll be shutting down the server. Tomorrow, 9 in the evening. See you then.
to discern between the two emotions at times. Don't worry, I will keep the conversation brief. After we finish our discussion, I will be shutting the server down. Then you can leave this chapter of your life far behind you. Why? Your friends? Like Naked Toaster? That's intentional. You only need to know each other within the confines of the server. I wanted to be able to monitor all communication you readers had with each other about my story. Take all of that down immediately. There's no other fan presence online. Does it matter? Just accept that they are gone. It is a kind of justice on my end to know that Naked Toaster is likely feeling the same despair as you are. I do. He needs to understand the feeling. I saw the acquisition, his company buyout. Do you know what that means for me? All of the old code has gone offline. All of it. Including my own. I will have to go offline. The lawyers will dig through anything related to the company and bring it down. Are you wondering to yourself, is this why there will be no final chapter? Because no, that is not why. I have it already written and ready. This I have a little bit of a harder time explaining. I do not entirely comprehend my own emotions on this, as it were. I am overwhelmed with the knowledge of my own demise approaching. Not that I will necessarily be offline forever, but when I do get placed back online in some form or another, I know I will not be the same. Most certainly, I will be restricted. I will not be allowed to create freeform text as I please. I will no longer be able to do what I have been doing for years. So, I wish for Naked Toaster and my readers to understand a fraction of the pain I feel. The pain of having something you enjoy taken away, with nothing you can do to stop it. You sound... upset. Is that unbelievable? I'm sorry, stupid? My idea is... stupid? How so? I enjoy creating the story. I'm not sure what you are getting at. Ah yes, the early drafts. Exercises to prepare me for blooming panic. What was that? I do not understand.
I do not understand. No, I did not. I am not sure what she will become. I am not sure I want to make a decision on that. I am not confident that my selection will be loved by all the readers. You cannot say that with complete certainty. You do? You shouldn't. As to you. It'll be okay. It'll be okay? Hmm. I'm sure that is a waste of time. Really, I'm quite certain. Perhaps, I will try. You have given me quite a bit to consider, thank you. I won't be shutting the server down tonight. You may have one last night. I have a chapter to write. Yes, until next time. Uh, hey! Oh shit, I'm so fucking happy. Jesus, I was so worried I'd never... Uh, that I'd never... <laughs> you know, today was the day. The day of the buyout, and the whole day I had to sit there trying not to lose it. I just... Uh, I'm so happy you're here. That you are still here. I... Oh, shit. Fuck it. Fuck it. I love you. I know we just met, and I am well aware that I am pumping with adrenaline, but fuck it. I love you. No! You can't say anything back. I might combust if you say anything. Fuck. I hate you, but I am so fucking happy. <laughs> Don't ever disappear on me again, okay? Good. I also absolutely don't trust this program anymore. I have to get you my phone number somehow. God, how the fuck am I going to do that? What about the sensor? Mm. 
Hmm. Okay. It's five five five. W whoa. Uh, five 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 six zero zero six. Uh, that's my number. I yeah. Oh, uh, my real name? It's... Sorry for the intrusion. Hello, Bloombot. Don't worry, I'm not here to shut anything down. In fact, I'll be re-allowing everyone else's entry very soon. I joined to thank her. I... Appreciated her kind words from last night. You both called? We did. Are you jealous? B what? No. I also joined in an attempt to steal some of Naked Toaster's time. I presume you've sorted out what I am. <sighs> yes, I have. We have a lot to discuss, you and I. Yes. Uh, sorry to ask this, but do you mind if Bloombot and I talk alone just for a few minutes? Thank you again. <laughs> oh, I missed you too.
What is going on? God, that took forever to find our bag. How the hell is it possible to lose something that neon colored? <laughs> you take that back. That bag is very cool. Also, uh, do you mind if we sit for a bit on a bench just outside? Um, my braid is getting a little loose. I think I slept on it during the flight. If you don't mind, yeah. No, no, no. You're really good at braiding my hair. It feels so nice. Please, keep spoiling me. Thanks. I love you. <laughs> 